Lord, open the eyes of our hearts by the power of your Spirit, that we may know the hope to which we've been called in Jesus Christ. Amen. God won't give you more than you can handle. Has anyone ever said that to you? <laughs> Sometimes we say it to someone who seems to be juggling a lot of different activities at the same time. Many years ago now, when my twins were born, it was hard work, and I was constantly exhausted. It wasn't uncommon for both of them to be screaming at the same time, and it was heart-wrenching deciding who to pick up and deal with first. Folk often said to me, God won't give you more than you can handle. And I admit it did spur me on, and I would think, all right, I can do this. And praise the Lord, they weren't triplets. <laughs> At other times, though, it just made me feel like a failure. The other common phrase was, I don't know how you do it, I could never do that. And I would think, I don't know how I do it either, but I do it because I have to. And I don't have much choice in the matter. Don't get me wrong, I love them so much. And I wouldn't have had it any other way. But the best response, as far as I was concerned, was an offer of help. We don't just say, God won't give you more than you can handle for the trivial things. We use it also as a means of encouragement for someone going through a really, really tough time. As a way of encouraging them to keep going, to reassure them that they will make it through. Therapists' offices, though, are made up of people who have been given more than they can handle. God won't give you more than you can handle is another one of those half-truths. A statement that we make that's not quite the whole truth. And it needs some better nuancing. Using it can hurt people, too. It can lead people to conclusions about God that can push people away from faith rather than drawing them towards God. This sermon series, by the way, on half-truths, comes from a book of the same name by Reverend Adam Hamilton from the United Methodist Church of the Resurrection in Kansas City. So what does Scripture say about how much God gives us to handle? We're going to listen to Paul's statement to the Corinthians and then to what the psalmist says. First Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has seized you that isn't common for people. But God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted beyond your abilities. Instead, with the temptation, God will also supply a way out so that you will be able to endure it. And Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a help always near in times of great trouble. That's why we won't be afraid when the world falls apart, when the mountains crumble into the center of the sea. So when people cite our cliche for today, God won't give you more than you can handle, it's usually the reading from Corinthians that we heard that's used to, um, that's cited to back it up. No temptation has seized you that isn't common for people, but God is faithful. He won't allow you to be tempted beyond your abilities. Instead, with the temptation, God will also supply a way out so that you'll be able to endure it. And all that gets paraphrased as, God won't give you more than you can handle. But is it an accurate paraphrase? So the word we see translated as tempted can also mean tested. If we go with the tested translation, then perhaps our cliché is a good paraphrase. But if we look at the context of this verse and look at the surrounding verses, then we can see that Paul is talking about sexual immorality and idolatry, not trials and hardships. Temptation is the better translation for that Greek word. 
Paul's newly converted Christians were living in a location that we know had a lot of drunkenness, idol worship, and temple prostitutes. They were surrounded by sexual immorality, and it was very tempting for those new converts to go back to their former ways. So the verse that we read was all about self-discipline in the face of temptation. If we look at the last part of the verse, we can see that Paul was telling the Corinthians that God would always help them when they were tempted. God will always supply a way out of temptation. The passage isn't about adversity and difficult circumstances. It's all about God not allowing us to be tempted beyond our abilities, since God will always give us a way out. Now, sooner or later, Temptation always comes our way. <laughs> and it's not always easy to resist it. Even when we know that there's a way out of the situation, we don't always take it. What's your biggest temptation? Is it food? Eating the whole bar of chocolate or the pack of cookies? Is it alcohol? Is it something else? This is a shop in Old Town, Sacramento, selling some very enticing chocolates. Actually, we did manage to resist going in there yesterday, but only because the, by the time we'd had lunch, the line was right outside the door. <laughs> Paul's promise to the Corinthians is that when we are tempted, that God will give us... Uh, is that when... Paul's promise to the Corinthians is that when we get tempted, God will give us a way out of that temptation. Resistance isn't futile. We can overcome the temptation. So scripture doesn't explicitly support the statement, God won't give you more than you can handle. And as I said a few minutes ago, there are times when we turn to therapists and others for help because we have been given more than we can process and we can handle on our own. So let's look at the ways in which the statement, God won't give you more than you can handle, is wrong. As we talked about when we thought about the statement two weeks ago, everything happens for a reason. God doesn't will bad things to happen to us. God doesn't give us bad things to handle. And God definitely doesn't pile them one on top of another, increasing our suffering until just before we get to breaking point. The better response to those who are suffering is not a platitude, God won't give you more than you can handle. But instead, how can we help? When we get sent bad things, and more than we can handle, they're not sent by God. But God will walk with us through those circumstances. Jesus has already walked through our shared human experiences. He knew suffering, rejection, betrayal, torture, and death. And his resurrection proclaims that they don't have the final word in our lives. Scripture doesn't promise we won't go through hard times. But it does promise that when we do so, that God is our hope and strength. So perhaps a better and more accurate cliche is God will help you handle all that you have been given. God walks with us through our darkest valleys. You all know that Psalm 23 that we say quite often at funerals. It's good for other times too. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Or as we read earlier, and our singers sang for us, Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear that the earth should change, that the mountains shake in the heart of the sea. God sends us, stretcher bearers to help us when we can't walk on our own. We survive the worst times and experiences through our faith in God, our experience of God and God's care for us. We hold on to our faith knowing at some point joy will overshadow the pain and eventually God turns the challenges around 
and uses them for good. Our country is now at a challenging point in its history. We all have a part to play as we restore a broken nation to wholeness. Our success as a nation rests on President Trump's success as a leader. May God's spirit be with him, giving him wisdom to lead in difficult times. There are those in this country who fear that the change in regime with the new balance of power in Congress and Senate will remove some of their rights and that we're heading for worse times. We have immigrants, Muslims, the disabled, lesbians and gays, those with pre-existing medical conditions and others living in fear of what the future might hold. I know we have all political opinions in this room, in this congregation, in this neighborhood. Some of you are excited for the changes that are ahead. Others think that any fear is misplaced and we need to take a wait and see approach. Others think that the people have spoken and that we accept the results. Some think that the racist, misogynistic and xenophobic words from the campaign and the current nationalistic fervor will carry over into legislation and take us down a path that is unwise. But whatever your political views, our country yesterday did experience what may have been the biggest one day protest in United States history, as the Women's March on Washington and its sister marches all over the country and world brought people together to express their hopes and their fears that the gains made in human rights are not eroded. And there were some people from this church and the neighboring United Methodist churches at the Sacramento March. We individually, like our country as a whole, have to figure out what it means to be Christians, to live with our diversity in unity together, while also making sure that we take good care, as the Bible says, of the widow, <clears throat> the orphan, the poor, and the oppressed. Whether we like it or not, we all live out our lives as disciples of Jesus Christ in the public square. <clears throat> Whatever our political views, as we wrestle with the events of last week, from Martin Luther King Day to the inauguration on Friday, the violent protests that erupted there in Washington, to the Women's March yesterday, let's remember that God will help us handle all that we have been given. That God is our refuge and strength. That God will send others to help us or maybe send us, of us, to help others. In his book, Adam Hamilton tells of a woman, Annie Johnson Flint, born on Christmas Eve in 1866 in New Jersey. <clears throat> At age three, her mother died, and then her father became ill, and she was put up for adoption before she finished high school, both of her adopted parents died. Then she trained to be a teacher and was diagnosed with severe arthritis that left her unable to work. So she gave up the teaching and spent her remaining 40 years in a wheelchair in a sanatorium. She began writing poetry. Then her hands swelled up so much that she had to dictate her poems. She continued to compose them because she wanted to help others who were undergoing similar challenges. She's best remembered for her poem, What God Hath Promised. And this is a woman who received so much in her life, more than any of us could handle. The poem, What God Hath Promised, goes like this. God hath not promised skies always blue, flower strewn pathways all our lives through. God hath not promised sun without rain, joy without sorrow, peace without pain. God hath not promised we shall not know toil and temptation, trouble and woe. He hath not told us we shall not bear many a burden, many a care. 
God hath not promised smooth roads and wide, swift, easy travel, needing no guide. Never a mountain rocky and steep, never a river turbid and deep. But God hath promised strength for the day, rest for the labour, light for the way, grace for the trials, help from above, unfailing sympathy, undying love. So when you hear the phrase, God won't give you more than you can handle, remember it's only a half truth. The truth in it is that when you face temptation, God will help you find a way through if you will open yourself to the opportunity. And the false bit is the idea that God makes us suffer and will give us suffering but no further than our breaking point. So when you're walking through hard times, it's okay to admit you have more than you can handle and need help. At times we need a doctor or a therapist. More often we need family, friends, neighbours, church family to carry us through. And as we do reach out, we trust that God walks with us, that God's Spirit is at work, helping us handle all that life gives us. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together. Oh God, how grateful we are for the way that you walk with us in every moment of our lives. In the moments when we are tempted, help us to remember to turn to you for the strength we need to resist. When we walk through adversity, help us to remember that the burdens did not come from you, but that you will help us bear them. Thank you for those who reach out to us with a listening ear, a willing hand, and marching feet, as together we faithfully witness to each other and build the land that God has planned, where love shines through. Amen. Amen.